Hi, my name is Sally Briggs, and I am actually talking to you from a racetrack in Willows, California. Um, my husband races cars, so I usually go with him, and I actually use the headset and kind of help him out with timing and different things like that. So um, I'm here to give you an inspirational um, little talk about how God has shown me something in my own life today, in fact, and, and, and we all struggle with the same thing that I'm going to share. So I'd like to start with prayer. Dear Father, I thank you for this message. It's a hard one because I was very convicted in my own life because of it. And I just thank you now that I can share it with others and that um, you can speak into them personally and um, that we can work on being changed with the power and strength of the Holy Spirit working within us. And I thank you for this, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today, uh, my son, my son, sorry, my sons race frequently also, but today just my husband. And he is, he has a new car and it's a, it's a little bit faster. And he was competing with some other cars that are a lot faster. And so I was up in, it's called the, the Lookout Tower. And when you're um, looking at the Lookout Tower, excuse me, my, 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 laptop was doing a weird thing. Anyway, when you're at the lookout tower and you're looking, you're watching um, the people driving by and you're right above the straightaway, which is that, that's the one long length of track that um, the cars will shoot down when they start at, start up. And it's also where the finish line is. So my husband's driving in his car and he's doing pretty well. And, and I have an app on my phone that shows me how fast he's going. So his timing is great. And he's in a qualifier. Now, a qualifier is not the race, but it, it positions you by your time. Whatever time you get in the qualifier is how you will be positioned for the race um, the next day, which is tomorrow. So he was doing great. He was in like about P4, it's called, which is position four. And he's coming down the track and he's coming behind a car that is actually faster than his, um, as engine wise. And this car starts to block my husband. And my husband was trying to go by. And if, if you're going by someone, you're supposed to let that person go by. Well, this driver was literally going back and forth in front of my husband, like real jerkily. I don't know if that's a word, but. And um, so my husband wasn't able to go around him. And I knew that my husband would be so upset. I mean, that's just, it's not safe driving. It's illegal. It's, you know, whatever. So uh, my husband pulls in, it's halfway through the race, and he pulls into the pit crew to get his tire pressures checked, which is common. And the qualifier, you can just go out there whenever you want, and you're just trying to get your best time for the race on the next day. So he goes into, into the pit, and he has three people. He has, a, his, he has a, like a headset inside his helmet, and then I'm wearing a has, headset, and then two other men are wearing headsets. So he has contact with three of us. And so two of the guys, they, they like are asking him about air, tire pressure and the heat of the car and et cetera, all the, the technical stuff. Me, I'm the one who tells him when he's halfway through the race. I tell him when he only has about five minutes in the race. I tell him what position he's in. And I tell him if I see a hazard on the track. So so my husband comes into the bit and he says on his radio, which we all hear, he says, who, he goes, find out who that black car was that was blocking me. And I knew he was talking to me because the other guys wouldn't be doing it. And I'm like, okay, okay. And so I'm watching, he gets back on the track and he's driving and I, I'm figuring out who this car is. And I find out it's a black car and he's number 71. So um, I'm not in, I'm not giving up any names because I don't want the person's name to be recorded. But anyway, it's a black car, number 71. And so my my husband's driving on the track and I see that this black car is coming up behind him and he's coming on the next turn. He's going to be behind my husband. So I say into my microphone, black car number 71 is coming up behind you. 
because I knew my husband would know exactly who I was talking about, even though I knew that the other two guys on the radio would not appreciate me doing this because they want Joe to keep focused, not be concerned about the person who has been a pain. But I know my husband so well that I knew my husband would want to know. So anyway, my husband's... Um, I see the black car coming up behind him and I see my husband doing the same thing to him back and forth, and back and forth. And he blocked him and he wouldn't let him go by, which is really not legal. And, and I'm laughing. Um, they can't hear me on my, on my headset cause I haven't pushed my button, but I'm just laughing out loud because I'm watching my husband. I'm thinking, Oh, you were mad and you're wanting to get back at him. And so, after the race is over, my husband came in and he ended up being in second place. And the guy that was being obnoxious actually spun off and ended up being like number 25 in the race. So I don't know how that happened, but but he, he lost his position. He wasn't being driving correctly. So so my husband comes in and he's really mad and he's still mad. And he goes, I'm going to go talk to that guy. I'm not going to get the race officials involved, but I'm going to tell that guy, you know, that he was not driving safely. And, and so I, I am, I'm all into it. You know, yes, you need to tell him, you know, and yeah, that was not right. What did he think he was doing? You know, and, and then I was telling the other guys that were friends of ours all about this and this this number car, number 70, 71, and I'm giving them the guy's name. And, and then I'm walking back to our trailer and the Holy Spirit's like, was that necessary? I heard him down inside me. He said, okay, let's, let me be, bring to your remembrance a couple things. One thing is do unto others as you have them do unto you. You are not your own vindicator. And, and I'm thinking, okay, well, that's for my husband, you know. And my husband's a believer and a very strong Christian. And I'm thinking, okay, I might have to mention that to him because I don't want to think that I'm guilty. But then I was, then the next scripture that came to me was Ephesians 4, verse 29. And the Holy Spirit's just dropping these spirits, these uh, words into my spirit because that's what he does. He brings to our remembrance things that we need to hear of correction if we need correction and we all need correction and we all mess up and he's telling me you know in Ephesians 4 verse 29 the scripture comes up and it's about when we speak of others we are not to use unwholesome conversation but we are only to speak to build each other up to edify each other that means strengthen each other be helpful toward each other <laughs> And I am getting so convicted. I'm thinking, okay, how many people now did I just tell how how bad that number 71 was? And I was talking with my husband and my husband was like, you know, he got him back by blocking him. And he was telling me how it was so great to be able to block that guy. And, and you know, and it was all, all so not, not Christ-like. So not Christ-like. How are we to be Christ-like? We are to be the light of the world. People are supposed to be able to see Christ through us. They're supposed to be able to see the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which is in Galatians 5, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I was thinking, ooh, I don't think any of those came out of me. It was all the opposite. So anyway, it was a good lesson for me. And I pray that my words right now would might be helping you. We get caught up in those moments. And yet we still are supposed to walk as Christ would walk. We are still supposed to be thinking, what would Jesus do? And, and we're not to get back at people. You don't repay evil for evil, but you repay evil with good. So... So, dear Father, I thank you for this message. And I know you always forgive us when we mess up. And I just thank you that I've already asked you for your forgiveness. It's already done. And, Lord, it'll be a new opportunity for me to do things in a different way. And I pray whoever is hearing this right now, they will realize that when this kind of situation rises up in front of them. And you just bless them and speak to them kindly and correct them. And we thank you for this. And I love you, Jesus.
And I pray this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you.